uh, under the microphone. Under the microphone? Yeah, like uh, um, where's the uh, audio settings? Under audio, and then else, did you click on the audio tab? Well, it should yeah. have highlighted. And then yeah. right underneath, there's a little checkbox that says automatically adjust my microphone volume. Automatically joined by computer. Now, my, are you on the audio setting? Uh, yeah, it says, uh, uh, then it's, I hit settings, then it says audio, right. and I clicked on that, and it says speaker, and then it says microphone, test yeah. microphone, test yeah, speaker. Yeah, keep going down, and you'll see right underneath the volume control, there's a checkbox that says automatically adjust microphone. Oh, yeah. Volume. Yeah, that's checked. Oh, it is? Okay, yeah. so you might just need to tone down your volume level then. Okay, how about now? Does it sound any better? Uh, you, yeah, you sound okay. Turn it down just a little more. All right. Uh, I was causing feedback. How about now? No, maybe maybe it's not you. Oh. All right, te go ahead and test it. Test, test, test. No, so it wasn't, it wasn't me. Maybe I'm too close to it? Maybe. How about now? Does it sound better? Test, 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 test. Something's causing a squeak. You don't have any other devices connected? Well, obviously not, because I've seen Okay, that. everybody turn off all devices. Um, turn, turn oh, you got two devices turned on. But he's not hooked up to audio on the other one. Uh, yeah, that, okay. All right, clear all. Okay. All right, we got all our phones are off. Turned off, right? Okay. What's causing okay. something's causing a squeak, like a squeaky wheel? Well, I made you the host, Joe. So, uh, can you still see my video? Is it still sharing? Oh yeah, because I, I didn't turn it back on because Jody's testing his audio. Um, on my microphone, microphone array. Maybe, should I put it same as system? Maybe that'll work. Uh, you you can try that, but you should you should just want your your regular microphone. How about now? Does that sound any better? Oh, that sounds good. Okay. All right. So I changed that. Okay, that's uh, that's better. All right. <laughs> that sounds oh. clear, but I think my, volume's low. My volume's low? Okay, let me... It, it's good when you're that close to it, Jody. Okay. But I doubt you're going to be like that when you're speaking. All right, let me let me try this. Um, how do I adjust that now? Okay, do you need me for anything else, Joe? How about now? Oh. Does that volume sound better? Sounds that, good. that sounds pretty good. Okay. All right. So I, I turned it off the automatic adjustment. Let's just leave it on where I manually set it. Okay. All okay. right. Jeremiah. Yeah. Did you get back to me on the prayer? Yeah, I did. Tim's going to be doing it. Tim's going to? Okay, great. Yeah, I texted you that and my, my dad's. Uh, oh, I, I got your dad's uh, baptismal date. I didn't even see the other text. Okay. Okay, great. Okay. All right. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay, are we all set, Jody? Uh, yeah, I'm all set. Okay. You, open? you can hear the songbirds singing And you watch the clouds roll by Then you're walking in the valley As the sun shines in a clear blue sky You're welcome your loved ones and you can't believe your eyes yes this earthly paradise was just around the corner there's a house down in the valley and a house high on the hill there is singing by the river as the water flows and turns the mill The golden fields are waiting 
Let the harvesting begin Once the world we're living in Was just around the corner It's great to share with friends who care The things that we looked forward to Now every tear has disappeared The world is young and life is new There's the sound of happy voices And the scent of new mown hay Now you're calling to your loved ones As you start another perfect day Then we thank our God Jehovah For his tender loving care Yes, the blessings we all share Were just around the corner And every day I smile and say How good to see your happy face Cause once it seemed I only dreamed that you'd be in my warm embrace Waiting round the corner Is a world I long to see It's a promise from Jehovah It's a guaranteed reality And it's hard to get downhearted When I think of what's in store It's the day I'm waiting for And it's just around the corner Life like a mess Appears for just a day <coughs> And disappears tomorrow All that we are can quickly fade away Replace with tears and sorrow If a man should die Can he live again? Hear the promise God has made He will call The dead will answer So have faith and do not wonder For our God can make us stand And we will live forever As the work of His own Friends of our God, though they may pass away, will never be forsaken. All those asleep, all those who asleep. in God's memory stay, from death we will awaken. Then we'll come then to we'll see. All that life can be Paradise eternally
of his hand. So have faith and do not wonder. For our God can make a stand. And we will live forever. Of his own
can hear the songbirds singing And you watch the clouds roll by Then you're walking in the valley As the sun shines in a clear blue sky You're welcoming your loved ones And you can't believe your eyes Yes, this earthly paradise Was just around the corner There's a house down in And a house high on the hill There is singing by the river As the water flows and turns the mill The golden fields are waiting Let the harvesting begin Once the world we're living in Was just around the corner It's great to share with friends who care The things that we looked forward to Now every tear has disappeared The world is young and life is new There's the sound of happy voices And the scent okay, of honey. new mown hay Now you're calling to your loved ones As you start another perfect Hello? day Then we thank our God Jehovah For his tender loving care Yes, the blessings we all share Were just around the corner And every day smile and say How good to see your happy face Cause once it seemed I only dreamed that you'd be in my warm embrace Waiting round the corner Is a world I long to see It's a promise from Jehovah It's a guaranteed reality And it's hard to get downhearted When I think of what's in store It's the day I'm waiting for And it's just around the corner Life like a mist Appears for just a day And disappears tomorrow All that we are And quickly fade away Replace with tears and sorrow If a man should die Can he live again? Hear the promise God has made He will call The dead will answer So have faith and do not wonder For our God can make us stand And we will live forever As the work of His own hand Friends God, though they may pass away, will never be forsaken. All those asleep, all those who asleep. in God's memory stay, from death we will awaken. Then we'll come to see. All that life can be, paradise.
paradise eternally.
can hear the songbirds singing And you watch the clouds roll by Then you're walking in the valley As the sun shines in a clear blue sky You're welcoming your loved ones And you can't believe your eyes Yes, this earthly paradise Was just around the corner There's a house down in the valley And a house high on the hill There is singing by the river As the water flows and turns the mill The golden fields are waiting Let the harvesting begin Once the world we're living in Was just around the corner It's great to share with friends who care The things that we looked forward to Now every tear has disappeared The world is young and life is new There's the sound of happy voices And the scent of new mown hay Now you're calling to your loved ones As you start another perfect day Then we thank our God Jehovah For his tender loving care Yes, the blessings we all share were just around the corner and every day I smile and say how good to see your happy face as once it seemed I only dreamed that you'd be in my warm embrace Wait. Can you hear me? Okay. We'd like to welcome everyone here today to this sad occasion. Uh, we lost a dear friend, a family lost a father, a grandfather. He was also an uncle. And here we're here talking about Ned Gary Holderbaugh. Ned was born on October 3rd, 1939 in Fransco, Indiana. His mother and father was Archie and Lillian Holderbaugh. Ned was survived by his brother Warren Holderbaugh, his wife Karen Holderbaugh, and his son Duke, Jeremiah, Nehemiah, and Shannon. He also had uh, daughters, their names are Terry, Rachel, Martha, and Jenny Ellis. And he had several grandchildren and great-grandchildren, 13 in total, plus one on the way. And how proud he was uh, to let you know that there was one on the way. When we look at uh, Ned's life, he was baptized on April 20th, 1975. He was a faithful servant of Jehovah right to the end. You know, it's interesting, some of the fond memories that I have of Ned that uh, I've discussed with uh, uh, Jeremiah were some of the actions that he took. Ned was known in the hospital and the nursing home as one of Jehovah's Witnesses. He wanted to make sure everyone knew. As a matter of fact, after his uh, death, one of the individuals from the nursing home actually contacted Jeremiah and told him that Ned wanted to be sure everybody knew. Ned was a friend to Jehovah, and he cherished that friendship. I remember uh, going up to the hospital and at the nursing home, Ned wanted to make sure that he had his friendship bracelet on. You know, uh, the world, they have these bracelets which identify them who they belong to. Well, Ned, when he was in the hospital and nursing home, he made it very clear that he wanted that no blood bracelet. He wanted that door, that sign put on his door to make sure 
that everybody knew that he was a friend of Jehovah and he would not compromise his faith, not even to spare his life. When we also think about Ned as uh, he is Jeremiah and the, the uh, and the young and, and the family was getting together, um, there they he always made sure that when they had their friends over to the house that he read to them, he talked to them about Jehovah. There was one young man who was 11 years old that came over to the house, and Ned would read him the My Book is Bible stories, and. <laughs> It's interesting that before uh, Ned died, he was at a, a public talk, and I think it was one of the first public talks that Jeremiah had given in this area, and Brother Wilcox come up and said to Jeremiah, got talked to him, and Jeremiah and Brother Wilcox had known each other, and Brother Wilcox was that 11-year-old boy that used to come over to the house, and his first contact was with Ned, and years later, it opened his heart to uh, accepting the truth. But you know, when we go through the loss of a loved one, we go through some normal feelings. And grief is a very normal feeling, even for faithful servants of Jehovah. Abraham, in Genesis 23, 2, talks about Abraham and Sarah, and how when Sarah died, Abraham couldn't be comforted. Also, if we open up our Bibles, let's take a look at the account of Jacob. And that's found at uh, Genesis 37. And let's read verse 34 and 35. Genesis 37, 34 and 35. Now, this is when Joseph, uh, Jacob found out that, or thought that Joseph was dead. Notice how his, what his reaction was. With that, Jacob ripped his garment apart and put sackcloth around his waist and mourned his son for many days. And all his sons and all his daughters kept trying to comfort him. But he kept refusing to take comfort saying, I will go down into the grave mourning my son. And his father continued weeping for him. We can see that faithful men, faithful women, we all, we all suffer from grief when we lose a loved one. Even Jesus showed sympathy and felt for those that were grieving around him. Jehovah himself has tender feelings for us when we're going through this grieving process. Again, let's take a look at our Bibles at Psalms 34, and let's read verse 18. Then that's Psalms chapter 34 and verse 18. Notice here. Jehovah is close to the brokenhearted. He saves those who are crushed in spirit. Jehovah is close to the brokenhearted. At this time, as we're going through the grieving process, Jehovah will give us the strength and he will strengthen the family. Matter of fact, if we flip over a few more chapters there to Psalms 147 and take a look at verse 3, Psalms 147, verse 3. Notice, he, Jehovah, heals the brokenhearted. He binds up their wounds. It's interesting that this uh, last statement there, he binds up their wounds, comes from a Hebrew expression, which gives the idea of a nurse taking a bandage and putting medication and securing a wound to strengthen it and to help to bring relief and comfort. Well, how do, how is it that Jehovah binds up our wounds today? Well, that's through his word. Jehovah reassures us through his word that he can and he does and he will comfort us. Jehovah is the God of all wisdom love, justice, and power. Even though we have death today, death was not Jehovah's original purpose for mankind. There's a reason that we die. And that is found in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, in verse 15 through 17, where we see that death is the result of Adam and Eve, their sinful course. And because of their sinful course, we have inherited it. 
all of Adam and Eve's descendants um, in, inherit this imperfection. We all are on the same course of death. But remember, we talked about Jehovah and how he binds up the wounds. Well, how does he do that? Well, through his word, the Bible, and let's take a look and see how Jehovah is going to bind up our wounds even today. Let's take a look at uh, one of the first scriptures, and there's going to be a lot of scriptures because this is a time that we really need to rely on Jehovah in his words to give us comfort. Let's take a look at Revelation chapter 21. And let's read verse 21. And let's read three and four. Notice there at Revelation 21, three and four, starting with verse three, with that I heard a loud voice from the throne say, look, the tent of God is with mankind and he will reside with them and they will be his people and God himself will be with them. Did you notice those opening words? With that I heard a loud voice. Why would a loud voice come from the throne? Because he wants us to hear. He wants us to listen so that we can benefit. Now, when you think about that loud voice and what it says in the next verse, you can see why, especially during these times that we need to pay close attention and hear what Jehovah is saying. And he will wipe out every tear from their eye and death will be no more. Neither will mourning, nor outcry, nor pain be any more. And here's the reason why. The former things have passed away. Do you feel the sad? Do you feel Jehovah's healing power, how he's wrapping it around us even today? The Bible clearly tells us that Ned has fallen asleep. He has fallen asleep. He's in this sleep, this uh, deathless condition, until Jehovah brings him back. But we can also be sure that even though the soul is mortal, we, we do die, we can be sure that we are going to experience the resurrection. How can we be sure of that? Well, again, let's open up our Bibles and let's take a look at Matthew chapter 20, verse 28. And these are scriptures that Ned was very familiar with. As a matter of fact, no doubt throughout the decades that Ned was acquainted with these scriptures, no doubt he reflected on these, not only at times that he needed comfort, but at times he also got to offer comfort. Let's take a look there at Matthew chapter 20, and we're going to read verse 28. Just as the Son of Man came not to be ministered to, but to minister, and here's the point, and to give his life as a ransom in exchange for many. Jesus' death meant that we have the opportunity for life. Again, let's take a look at that guarantee at 1 Corinthians 15, 22 and 23. And that's 1 Corinthians 15, 22, and 23. For just as in Adam, all are dying. So also in the Christ, all will be made alive. But each one of us in his proper order, Christ the first fruits, afterwards those who belong to the Christ during his presence. But you, did you notice the point? All will be made alive in the Christ. We have this guarantee. Jehovah is the one who appointed Jesus to take care of this responsibility. The anointed Christians, the ones with the heavenly hope, they will receive their heavenly life. But we, as the other sheep, we are resurrected to an earthly paradise. Again, let's go to God's word to verify this. Let's go to uh, Luke chapter 23, verse 43. 
That's Luke chapter 23, verse 43. And he said to him, speaking to the evildoer that was hanging on the torture stake next to Jesus, Jesus said to him, truly, I tell you today, you will be with me in paradise. Jesus made it very clear that there was and there is going to be an earthly resurrection. The Israelites in the past, Abraham, Sarah, Jacob, Joseph, all these faithful ones of old, they knew of this resurrection that was going to occur. When we think about the resurrection and who's going to benefit from it, notice in Acts chapter 24, Acts chapter 24, And we're going to take a look at verse 15. And I have hope toward God, which hope these men also look forward to, that there is going to be a resurrection of both the righteous and the unrighteous. We think about that hope of the righteous and the unrighteous. There are individuals who have lived and died without the opportunity to understand and apply Bible truth. These individuals also have this hope. Now, when we think about Ned's hope, Ned really looked forward to seeing the conclusion of the system of things. And we are so close. Ned's not going to enjoy or not to, going to not be able to experience the walking through into the new system alive. He's going to rest and sleep. But when he comes back in the resurrection, how wonderful it's going to be when we can all welcome him back. We look forward to the time that there'll be no more sickness. We don't have to worry about these things. And yes, Jehovah himself understands grief because the Bible even speaks about Jehovah feeling grief. And so as we're going through these next few, these next days and months, and, and sometimes it takes longer for individuals to overcome grief, we know, though, that we can be successful because Jehovah's got us. He's the one that's bandaging us. He's the one binding up our wounds. And today, even though we have a heart that's crushed because of this enemy death, but, you know, being here today, even though we're not together at the Kingdom Hall, it can have a benefit for us if we allow it to have. If you have your Bibles open still, let's go back to Ecclesiastes and let's take a look at Ecclesiastes chapter 9. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, and let's read verse 11. I have seen something further under the sun that the swift do not always win the race, nor do the mighty win the battle, nor do the wise always have the food, nor do the intelligent always have the riches, nor do do those with knowledge always have success. Notice the reason why, because time and unexpected events overtake them all. When we reflect on how brief life is, Even if we live a a long lifespan, 70, 80 years, it's still a brief lifespan. Here, the the, uh, Solomon was letting us know how brief it was and that no matter what our pursuits are, if they're not godly pursuits, then it's really a waste of time. If we take the time to reflect and do what Psalms 90, 12 says, be wise, my son and make my heart rejoice. Because if we do that, if we think about and meditate on our life course, it will help us so that we can actually do what's also brought out in Ecclesiastes. And let's go just a couple pages back to Ecclesiastes chapter 7, and we're going to read verses 1 through 4. 
a good name is better than good oil. And the day of death is better than the day of birth. Better to go to the house of mourning than to the house of feasting. For that is the end of every man. The living should take it to heart. Better is distress than laughter. For the sadness of the face makes the heart better. The heart of the wise is in the house of mourning. But the heart of the stupid is in the house of rejoicing. Now, some individuals have said that Solomon was, was depressed when he wrote this, but we know he wasn't. Solomon was making the point that it's the name with Jehovah that we need to focus on. See, if we do that, then we can benefit from occasions like this because it helps us to reflect on not only Ned's course of life, but our own course of life. Because by doing that, then we can make the changes while there's still time. We want to also think about the zealous, being zealous for zealous works and godly conduct. See, and by doing that, we share in the sanctifying of Jehovah's name. Ned wanted everybody to know that he was one of Jehovah's witnesses. He wanted everybody to know that he worshiped Jehovah. And even though Ned is in the grave and can no longer worship Jehovah, Jehovah still remembers. He remembers those acts. The resurrection hope is something that provides incentive for us. And again, let's go to our Bibles and let's open up to 1 Timothy. And we're going to read this time 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3 and 4. This is fine and acceptable in the sight of our Savior, God, whose will is that all sorts of people should be saved and come to an accurate knowledge of truth. With this accurate knowledge, did you notice that is something that's acceptable to Jehovah? We encourage all, all to take advantage of the time that we have to come to know Jehovah and to do Jehovah's will. And as you learn about Jehovah and the love that he's shown, not only for Ned, but for each and every one of us, it will help us so that we can have that secure hope in the resurrection. Because think about it. Even when facing death, Ned was still smiling. I remember uh, Ned <laughs> coming to the Kingdom Hall at the uh, uh, South Congregation with two canes. He pulled up in that little truck car that he had, and he got out. And even though he was in pain, he had a smile on his face when he sat at the, in the back of the kingdom hall. The last time that I, I actually went up to the uh, uh, nursing home there and saw Ned, you could still see the smile. He was happy. He wanted everyone to feel the joy that he had from serving his, his God, Jehovah. But, you know, today our hearts are still saddened because of the loss of Ned, because the family has lost a, a father, a husband, a grandfather, um, a brother. All of these individuals have lost uh, due to death uh, a friend. When we think about this occasion and the days coming up, they're all going to need to be comforted. So may all of us wrap our, around, our arms around each other and allow Jehovah to use us as individuals as a bandage to help and to strengthen and comfort the family and all of our friends. Also, we need to remember that all of our friends are going to need one another. We're all going to need each other for not only... Uh, uh, the sure hope that we have, but also for emotional support. Again, let's take a look at the Bible and take a look at what Jehovah says is coming in the very near future. Psalms 9, verse 9 and 10. Psalms chapter 9, 
verse 9 and 10. And this is not only in the future, but it's happening now. Jehovah will become a uh, secure refuge for the oppressed, a secure refuge in times of distress. But here's the point. Those knowing your name will trust in you. You will never abandon those seeking you. Even though we are suffering from the, the emotion of grief, Jehovah is not going to abandon us. He is going to take care of us. Pretty soon, this permanent relief will be here. We will no longer be going to funerals or having this type of talk. Instead, we'll be inviting the resurrected ones back. Can you imagine yourself as you're sitting around with your family, the ones that are going to join in, the questions that are going to be asked? You know, there's a song that comes to mind. If you have your song book, let's open up just to song number 140. And I'm not going to sing it because <laughs> my voice isn't too good, but uh, uh, I'm going to read the words of this song and just wrap your, imagine as you're, as you're reading this, put, your, put yourself there. And the title of the song is one that brought Ned and many of us comfort. And that's entitled Life Without End at Last. Notice, can you see with your mind's eye, peoples dwelling together? Sorrow has passed, peace at last. Life without tears or pain. In those days, all will be young, all at peace with Jehovah. Troubles are gone from now on, no need to weep or fear. Paradise all will enjoy as we sing of God's glory. Long as we live, we will give honor and praise to God. Sing out with joy of heart. You too can have a part. Live for the day when you'll say life without end at last. Ned no doubt found comfort in those words and so do we. We find comfort in it as we feel Jehovah wrapping the bandages on us and binding us up during this difficult time in these last days. May we all continue to turn to Jehovah and to be strengthened by him. Now we're going to ask Brother Tim Ellis if he would close with the closing prayer. But uh, before we do that, I'd like to also mention that there, there's going to be a breakout room with the family. And for all those who would like to speak to the family, if you raise your blue hand after the prayer, uh, you, you, you'll be put into the room with them so that everybody can uh, have a few words with the family. That's Brother Ellis. Jehovah, our Heavenly Father, we want to approach you now to ask that your blessing be upon us and helping us to uh, be comforted in this uh, time of loss. We realize that uh, Ned was one of your servants. Uh, he had a wonderful hope before him. Uh, now that he's resting, he's going to be uh, waking up soon in that beautiful paradise that you've promised us, the original purpose for this beautiful planet. So we ask that you help each and every one of us, not only to uh, do our best, just to make sure that we can uh, be pleasing to you, that we can take part in those promises, but that we can also be able to see Ned again after he's resurrected uh, to attain to perfect health, something that we can be able to enjoy uh, all of us. We look forward to that time. We pray that you uh, help us uh, each individually, that you do forgive us for our shortcomings because we do sin on a regular basis now as imperfect humans. But we look forward to the time we will no longer have to worry about that. So please have your uh, uh, spirit be upon all of us, especially the uh, family that are undergoing a hard time of loss right now. We pray all this through your son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Okay.